You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, Episode 71, the JAX.io Crypto Wallet and Blockchain Interface, featuring guests Charlie Shrim and Anthony DiOrio. Let's do it. What is up, Liberty Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash, and my goal is to help you build personal freedom by becoming a digital entrepreneur. All right, so today's episode has two guests, Charlie Shrim, an early Bitcoin pioneer and the founder of BitInstant, as well as Anthony DiOrio, the CEO and founder of Jax.io, as well as a co-founder of Ethereum. Both these guys are very successful entrepreneurs in their own right, and they've teamed up to work at Jax.io, which provides a cryptocurrency wallet and what they call a blockchain interface. And I really like that terminology, and we go in that very quickly at the beginning of the show. If you're a longtime listener, then you'll recognize Charlie Shrim from episode 61. Uh, where we talk about the first Bitcoin entrepreneur to go to prison. I'll leave a link in the show notes for you. So the main focus of this episode is to explore the possibilities of what it means to own your digital life and profile. Basically, what happens when you no longer need third parties to keep your digital identity safe, convenient, and secure? So we talk a lot about how cryptocurrency wallets were the, your first ability to interact with a blockchain, send and receive and basically store crypto assets. But where is that going? How, how is it going to change in the future as this internet of value quickly approaches us instead of just living in an internet of information. This is definitely a don't miss type of interview. I was really thrilled, humbled, and excited to have both Charlie and Anthony on. They give a lot of real keen insights on their vision of this crypto space, comparing that to some of the early days of cryptocurrencies when Bitcoin was just money and we didn't really understand a lot of the internet of value. And now, you know, several years later, it's really starting to mature and I find it just so interesting. So without further ado, let's get right into the show. It's a really great one. I hope you enjoy and we'll see you after the interview. On the line, I've got Charlie Shrim, who if you've been keeping up with the show, you'll see I interviewed him possibly a couple months ago, and Anthony DiOrio, uh, co-founder of Ethereum and currently with Jax.io Wallet. Gentlemen, welcome to Liberty Entrepreneurs. Thanks for having hey, us. Thanks for having us, and uh, maybe we could talk Charlie's position and my position as well. Yeah, go, actually go ahead. That's a great place to start. Go ahead, Charlie. Sure. So I jumped on board uh, with Jax. Um, a few months ago, and I'm working on business development and also the chief operating officer here. And I'm Anthony, I'm the CEO and founder of Jax. Yes, yeah, so I gotta say, you guys make a pretty good tag team. I was really excited when I found that Charlie joined the Jax team. Not only is it one of my favorite wallets, I actually gave you guys a huge plug when interviewing Eric just the other week. Um, as far as the tokens that you guys support, the ease of use, and I love the phrase blockchain explorer. I've really been using that a lot recently when trying to explain what cryptocurrency wallets are to people because they are multi-platform and it is just your interface to the blockchain, which I think is a clear way to explain it and an easy way to understand it. Anthony, when did you- It, it, it is, it is, but also blockchain explorer is what people know as just a website that explores blockchain transactions. Oh, you're right. So we blockchain don't want to be, interface. Be, be, blockchain be confused. Interface. Yeah, I think it's interface is more the term that you're looking for there. Yeah, yeah, that is a term. So just walk us through like blockchain interface when you came up with that idea. And, you know, I don't really see this blockchain interface phrase being used very often, yet it's so handy. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to, to use the analogy of the Internet and what the, the browser is, is basically an interface for everything to do with the Internet. It's uh, the Internet came about and provided a way to ship information between peers and be able to disrupted all the different areas of publications and postal services, everything to do with information flow. And the browser was really that, that one interface that, that opened the doors to, 
to information movement, and that's what gave the masses the opportunity to understand what the internet was. Before the browser, what were you doing on the internet? I mean, no one would know what to do. My dad wouldn't know what to do with, with the internet. So in the blockchain ecosystem and in value transfer now, as we move towards the, the age of value from, from the age of information and value being much more important, there's really that need for a cohesive interface that enables people to manage their digital, you know, their digital life, to manage their, the keys to all their digital assets, to manage their keys to their, their physical assets, to manage the keys to their, uh, their contracts, their identity, their communication. And that's where we've identified as creating that interface that enables a user to be in full control of their digital life, be in control of their keys. You know, what JAX is, it provides an, this interface on nine different platforms and many different chains to provide a single experience for the masses to finally understand what blockchain is or what, why it's important for you to be in control of your digital life and get away from all these third parties and these intermediaries that we've been so used to providing trust to facilitate uh, interactions and value movement between individuals. Yeah, and I think even more significantly is that you're multi-platform as well. So not only are you multiple chains, but you're multiple platforms, which really gives users the idea and the understanding that this is a, a, a true interface rather than thinking in terms of, oh, this is my Bitcoin wallet, this is my Dash wallet, this is my Ethereum wallet. You know, you guys have put it all together in one really clean interface, which I mean, it is an interface. I, I love being able to go on my phone, go on a Chrome browser or my desktop and be able to interact with my coins and the blockchains that I have access to because I hold those coins all within one really nice UI. Um, Char Charlie, I guess you came on a couple months ago with Jax. What need did the Jax team have that you are now providing? I don't think there was much of a need per se. The company's been around for a year and, and been doing really well. The, the growth is unbelievable. Um, it's what can I contribute and what value I could bring. And that is like taking Jax to the next level. So Anthony just showed his vision to you. The question is, how do we get it to the next level where we have hundreds of partnerships, hundreds of coins and tokens, be able to be that 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 project that supports all projects. And for that, um, being able to manage an internal team and having to make sure that everyone in the company is on board with what we're doing, grow the team the right way, have the most efficient company possible, and at the same time have uh, long-term business relationships with all these different people is what I was brought on to do. Yeah, I think business development is one of the most important roles in any business. You know, and making those strategic partnerships, Charlie, is something that you've been doing for as long as I've known you, and I'm sure longer than that. Sure. I know you're trying to support, you said a hundred currencies. And I read just the other week that, you know, the roadmap shows 70 or even more currencies. Like where do you see yourselves being positioned in the, the crypto wallet space? Because I don't think anyone else even comes close to that many currencies. Well, we've got to get away from the, the whole wallet concept as well. We are the wallet is our main is a main thing right now. That's the hub for value transfer, and we identified that years ago when we started Decentral, uh, and we started with CryptoKit building wallets in 2013. So, in our in the journey, we realized that it's not it's not about about Bitcoin only. It's about hey Ethereum. We did Ethereum. It's like oh now there's something greater than you know or or going to be as important as Bitcoin here. And then there's other stuff that's emerged, and, really, and, and the whole idea, well, is why are we focusing on one or two? The real thing is there's going to be hundreds of these things out there, and you need that single interface. So the wallet is one aspect of it, but then there's many other elements uh, that, that you build around the wallet. And that's going to be eventually our, our new products coming out. That's going to be a full, and we say interface, and we, we're going to release some, some concepts and ideas soon, but it's not just about the wallet. We're going to be expanding out to identity management. We're going to be expanding out uh, into secure communications. We'll be expanding out into the, you know, we're going to have our own block explorers. We're going to have this one-stop shop for everything you need for value transfer. And it's all built around the wallet because that's how you send and receive and manage value. And that's the, the, the interface that our partners are coming into. The Coinbases, the BitPays, the, the uh, Purses, the Bittrex. All these companies that we form partnerships with want to be inside of Jax and want to be in our interface because we bring them users. We connect them to multiple chains. And we're really that, that browser, that, that experience for value transfer, just like the browser was for information transfer or is for information transfer. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know you guys have been in development for a long time, and it definitely shows in your product. But didn't this come from, was, was Jax created on top of or with the idea of CryptoKit? Was, CryptoKit came before Jax, didn't it? 
Yeah, so here's an interesting story. Uh, I realized in 2012 that the wallet is the new browser. Like when I, f- I first read about Bitcoin in 2012 in the summer, and this was this was after you know like two years of deep deep economic uh, research about the housing crisis, the, the banking crisis, and really getting into the Austrian school of economics. And then I heard Bitcoin. I was like, well, here, here's the technology that enables you to carry out that school of thinking. And I realized that the wallet was really that that space. So that was one of the first projects was starting to develop wallets in 2013. And we launched CryptoKit in November of 2013 or October, a month before Vitalik showed me the white paper for Ethereum. So we launched it. We were at Inside Bitcoins. We launched a CryptoKit. And then he shows me this paper. I'm like, okay, well, drop everything. Let's let's do this. And I then funded and and started to getting the team together. It all came out of Decentral, my hub in Toronto, that I that I had launched in January first, two thousand fourteen. And I got most of my team at Decentral onto the Ethereum project. My accountants, my my lawyers, starting to to, to get that underway. And I kind of left or dropped CryptoKit for a while. And then after the fundraiser, after the crowd sale for Ethereum, I went back to the wallet space, and we came up with a project called Rush Wallet which is still active now, very active, many hundreds of thousands of users, HTML5 wallet. And, and then the progression was, again, was, it's, we got to get out, out of just the Bitcoin space here. This, this is about Ethereum. This is about Dash. This is about Zcash. This is about all these other technologies. We got to be that, that place, that center point, because who wants to have 50 wallets? Right. Who wants to have 100 different wallets? Yep. So we got to create that single experience across all devices that enables any blockchain, any asset, any digital asset to come together just like that browser. And that's that's what we're on the mission to do is enable people to take control of their digital lives as everything turns digital and you can own the keys to your digital world. And that's kind of the vision that we're, we're bringing forward. Yeah, so a lot of my listeners and probably both of you guys know that I've got experience in the offshore banking space. You know, I helped build Europe Pacific Bank with Peter Schiff for the past five years. I remember that. <laughs> and another, another, sorry, another interesting story. Peter Schiff was kind of the reason I got into Bitcoin, which oh, is really please interesting Please tell too. it, tell it. Isn't he oh, like anti Bitcoin somewhat now or something? No, but that's that's that's, that's what makes it so funny is that, <laughs> is that is that when I when I started looking into what happened with the banking crisis and start looking into what happened with the with the house all this stuff that I was just a you know I was just I was a sheep just just kind of coasting along this is you know I this is you got a sheep no way oh I was a sheep I was <laughs> no, a sheep I can't see that 2011 I was literally just following like everybody else le- realizing that that shit wasn't right but uh, just lo- what, found that video that that Peter Schiff was right video. Right. Classic. About him being being laughed at, at by Fox News and CNN and all these other people when he was predicting the housing crisis and predicting the, the banking problems. And and they're laughing him out. They're just they can't believe ah, the housing crisis. The more, you know, it hasn't been more, more, more sustainable. More Everything is great. You're you're crazy. And, and I watched that. And it's like so this is the contrarian view that I was had been looking for. And I started listening to his podcast for, for like it was it was an addiction. Mm-hmm. Every day, Monday to Friday, I was listening to Peter Schiff, listening. I was gaining my knowledge about Austrian School of Economics. I was learning about Ron Paul. And I was, I was, so it was Peter Schiff. And then it, the freedom and the liberty and the personal responsibility and the entrepreneurship. And I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur. That, that's what I do is I like to build things. Here's the sound economic theory. And then when Bitcoin came out, here's the technology. So he actually got me listening to, to, to about, about liberty and freedom. Mm. And then I searched for more podcasts on liberty and freedom. I did a search. I remember on Google, I did a Liberty Podcast, and I came up with Free Talk Live. Yep. And Free Talk Live was a place that I heard about Bitcoin the very first day I started listening to it. And, and that show has just brought so many people into the space. The Roger Vares, Eric Voorhees, the, I think, Charlie. Me Williams, too. Yeah, yeah I remember. Talk Live. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, he, that, that he, was just, Mark, that, that show, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah. Mark and Ian actually came to the Vid Instant office, like the first Bitcoin meetup, like in 2012. And they actually broadcasted live from there, like their whole three-hour show. And, <clears throat> well, Free Talk Live wasn't just Bitcoin, but free, FTL taught me everything about just what is, you know, uh, um, what is a, a narco-capitalist and libertarianism and Austrian, just all of it, just like kind of just sitting for hours and listening and listening and listening and, and having people call in and talk about their real issues. People call in and say, this is the situation that I'm dealing with. This is what the government's doing to me. And that was the best part is listening. Some of them were crazy, but listening to all these people talk about like real situations and how the government. And it's an is open like, call-in show, which is great too. Love, which yeah. is, you could talk about anything, and they challenge people that call in and say, "I can't believe you're talking bad about the police," and they'll challenge it. 
And that's what I love about Free Talk Live. And, and they've been the, the, the opening door to so many people in the crypto space and the crypto movement that that's my only one addiction. I have one addiction and it's listening to Free Talk Live every single day. Mm. I have nothing else. And that's one thing I've done for the last five years. I've listened to every single show that they've had and they do 365 days a year, seven days a week. That, like, is, I mean, that is like, unbelievable, like, first off. It's it, crazy. It, so I owe them so much and a lot of people owe them so much. And it's all about spreading liberty. And that movement is what's made me take the technology side of things with the business side and elements that I love, which is design, gamification, and pull this together. And I, I, would, I would safe to say that there would be no Ethereum without Free Talk Live. Yeah, there literally I, would be no Ethereum without Free Talk Live. Isn't it amazing how much value you can get out of a free service? I mean, you can listen to Free Talk Live every day of the entire year and literally never donate if you don't want to. Right. But they're still constantly providing so much incredible value. I mean, you guys are titans in this industry. Right. And you learned about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies from a free podcast, a free podcast. You think about the freedom that that podcast has created in your lives. And let's chat about the freedom that Jax creates in its users lives. We, we are a free service as well. I mean, everything you want to do in Jax, you get done for free. Uh, we don't charge any fees. Uh, where we do make our money is that we have partnerships. So Shapeshift, uh, we're going to do $80 million in Shapeshift volume this month. And that's skyrocketing. And we get an affiliate fee from, from Shapeshift. So we don't charge any fees. But the integration service partners that we bring in that our users are going to use is where we're going to monetize. So that's going to happen with the BitPays, the Coinbase, is everything. We're going to provide an amazing avenue for them to have a single place to get to our users and then connect to multiple chains that they don't necessarily support, which we do, which will open the door to every cryptocurrency for services that are say, let's just focus on Bitcoin right now. We're going to open those doors and, and add value. We add value to the user. It's all about value creation. Yeah, and It's all about value creation. Yeah. So you know, previously I was talking about how I helped build Peter Schiff's Euro Pacific Bank for the past five years. And, you know, once I got into the bank, I really didn't know what I was getting into, but now that I've had firsthand day-to-day experience in offshore banking, you know, we could reject your wire for literally any reason. I'm going to be very blunt and honest here. If, if we didn't like a way that you wrote to us in an email, maybe your wire took an extra week before we would book it because it just kind of fell in between the cracks or because of the laziness of a compliance person, or they don't, they didn't have the, the knowledge of your business and they just didn't want to really find out you could have your money kept on lock for a month. I mean, that's not uncommon for a month. And you had, as a client of the bank, you had no control over your money. There was, you know, we controlled your private keys to speak to our crypto peeps, right? All of them. And we had to report on you. And it was just a really nasty situation. Compare that against what you guys are building. It's exactly the opposite, it seems. It, it, it really is. Ours is about allowing people to be in control of every area of their life. And it's not just about their banking and their money, uh, which is, you know, that, that's what we have our banks doing for us. They hold our money. We have governments holding our IDs. We have, you know, them wanting to get into our communications. And it's really about that paradigm shift that we, that we feel is going to come in the future. And who knows how long it's going to take where the users will be in full control of every area of their digital lives. With Jax, you own the keys to your wallet. You own the keys to your interface. Um, with those keys, enable you to derive keys for any type of blockchain, any type of messaging system, any type of, of identity system. And you're in full control. And that's really true freedom. And that's the change that's coming because we used to rely on, we, we rely on these third parties for every area of our life. And it's time to take back, to take control of our lives. And Jax enables you to do that. You could also export your keys into other services if you want. So if anything would ever happen to us, you're still not locked up to us. So we've thought about all these things that make it that we don't have to be responsible for, any, for anything you do or have anything. Because I don't want to take that responsibility. I don't like to take people's money. I don't like to hold people's money. I, I like them to be in control. And then we'll find, figure out ways to make value that enable us to succeed as a company to create more and more value. That's the way that we're going to monetize on things. Yeah. So, Charlie, uh, stretching that point just a bit. Jax has integrated HD wallets or HD addresses in the Jax wallet, which I find really necessary, honestly, these days for me to seriously consider using a wallet because when you don't have HD wallets, then you're using the same address over and over, which isn't very private. Exactly. You know, just, exactly. To tell us a little bit more about what HD wallets are and why they're so important to the end user. To, to simplify it really, really simplified is that every time you create a new, every time you create a new address, it's derived from the same XPUB as the old address. So 
it's essentially being able to like clone all of your addresses and have all new addresses. And if you send value to one address, but if you send it to one of the old addresses, it'll all credit the same account. Yeah, it's a way, it's a way to add more privacy. So every time you get a payment sent, it gives you a new address so that you're not consistently using the same address, which would lead to a, a leak of privacy. And that's what the HD tree does. And it's all tied to your 12 word key that, that you get exactly. created on your device. And then you can, you can get an unlimited amount of, of private public keys for any blockchain or any other system. And that's what the HD chain does. Yeah, it definitely provides a lot more privacy. And even at the wallets that I use um, that don't have HD support, I still at times find myself sending into Jax and then sending out again to try to create a layer of privacy. Would you guys? Well, that's the thing. That's the thing, Ash. It's like, I completely agree. And, and not only that, but so your 12 words see that you create not only generates all of your addresses for, for Bitcoin, Ethereum and all your other tokens, but it also eventually will create your data. All of your data will be encrypted by your 12 word seed messaging. It's it's not just the, the elliptic curve is not just for for these tokens and coins, but it could be for anything. So imagine to be able the ability to your whole life is encrypted using the same seed. Yeah, you know, there was a couple of weeks ago where somebody wrote about a vulnerability in the Jax wallet being able to get that seed quite easily from the wallet itself if you have access locally to the computer. And it was said that, you know, what what can you guys do to try to increase that type of privacy and security? Now, I know the CTO came out and said that Jax wallet is a hot wallet, which is a great argument and that you shouldn't hold a whole lot of tokens in the wallet. But with you guys quickly becoming the number one go to wallet, especially for multi currency support, do you think that that might be revisited in the future to add maybe a user generated passphrase to hash and encrypt? Well, so you can add a pin to your thing, but we, we take the, the, the philosophy that you don't want every you don't want a separate system for every single app or every single every single app on your device. Can you imagine every single app that you'd have, you have to put a different pin, different password in order to access it, where if you can't keep your device secure, there's nothing we can really do to stop a keylogger coming on in the system. And sure. if there's a keylogger onto your phone, you give it to someone, they're going to get in the password no matter what it's encrypted. It's your responsibility to protect your device. We cannot do that. We, we can't do that. So what we'd recommend to people is you have to secure your devices. Use your fingerprint on your phone. Mm -hmm. Use passcodes on your phone. If you're going to go give your wallet out of your pocket to somebody and they take your cash, you're not going to go back to the manufacturer of the wallet and say, hey, you didn't add other areas of levels of security on my wallet there where I was keeping 50 bucks and they took my 50 bucks. Right. It also has to be a balance of of ease of use and a balance of portability. So portability, security, and ease of use are the three different elements that are in any wallet. And we being a hot wallet have to balance the ability for someone to be portable and be able to, to, to communicate between and pair devices without needing central servers. We don't wanna add a server so that if you're pairing your device, there's now a server in the middle of you being in control of your key. Mm. You pair it by having your 12 word mnemonic and just having and that that's enables the point. you to, that's the point, Ash, is the ability to, to have one app synced across all nine platforms and devices, whereas you can go to any you can you can go to any public computer and open up the Jax the Jax app. That's what we enable. If we had it the other way, um, you wouldn't be able to do that. So there's a balance of user experience. And it's it's interesting to note that no one actually lost money from this alleged vulnerability. Right. The only person who claimed yeah. to have lost money, he actually had his physical uh, um phone stolen from him and some other person who emailed and he didn't he have, have any, 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 any it, it, and he didn't have any security on his phone mm. he didn't have a, a passcode right. or a fingerprint you're going to get into anything like that if i give you think, think about how cold storage wallets work they're they're hardware devices that the first thing they do is they get you to write down a 12 word seed on a piece of paper and keep that piece of paper safe now, is it a fault in the hardware wallet if you take that 12 word piece of paper, you wrote the master seed down and give it to someone? That's not saying that the hardware of wallet is faulty. Right. You have to have that 12 word key where if you lose that hardware wallet, you can regenerate it. So what you need to do is you need to, to people need to, to think about how much money am I gonna be managing here? What's the type of device that I want? Do I want portability for a hot wallet where I want some spending cash and I wanna use it on my phone? I wanna use it on my desktop. I wanna use it all around. Maybe Jax is a good option for you. If you're storing life-changing amounts, there's better options. Do what I do, cold storage system, have a hardware device. That's what's doing it. 
but there's there, this this black and white mentality of either you're secure or you're not doesn't take into consideration all these other factors such as portability ease of use and choice it's all about choice and people have choices and people have to take their own responsibility for things that they do don't store large amounts of money on jacks if you can't control your device if you're giving it out and letting people access it it's it's just it's common sense and unfortunately you have these anonymous people that can that can spread fud and, and the bigger you get the more popular you get and yeah, people start start uh, you know trying to get at you more, and that's okay. We're going to keep delivering great value, keep delivering great products, and our user growth is is exploding. Our our transaction volumes is growing. Our shapeshift stuff is growing, and we're just going to keep 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 hurtling ahead and uh, and just creating creating amazing amounts of value. You know, I think you make yeah. a great point, Anthony, about securing your devices. I mean, Charlie, you helped me a ton before I started this round the world twelve month trip on helping me understand hardware two-factor like a Yubi key. And now, okay, yep. maybe I don't have a password on my Jack's wallet. Maybe I want one or not, it doesn't matter, but you have to have a Yubi key to even get into any of this stuff, even to get into my exactly. computer in general, right? And so trying to put all of that- I think you have a good setup now too. Yeah, thanks. Well, a lot of credit to you for helping me understand how Yubi keys work first off. Um, so let's let's talk about that shapeshift integration that you guys had just mentioned. You know, I, Again, I interviewed Eric and I wanted, I would like to chat about how wallet based exchanges could be taking some of the demand off of the centralized exchanges and where you see this going. The, the exchanges. So the, when we you decided to create Hello? wallets, the whole play was to, yeah, we hear you now, Hello? Charlie. Okay. Sorry. The whole play was to, um, to create a wallet that doesn't hold on to people's money. That's what we started with CryptoKid. It was, Hey, let's create an amazing user experience here where people can be control of their own keys. We just provide an interface and we let the users be responsible for their keys and interact with the blockchain. That way we're, we're non-custodian, we're not regulated, which is a huge thing. I mean, us not, not being taking custodianship of customer funds or being in control of their keys means that we don't have a compliance department. Mm -hmm. It means that we can globally scale without needing to worry about the rules and regulations of different countries. So that's a big element of things. And then on the exchange side, so we did the wallet that had the, that had the, uh, uh, you control your own keys, and then so well. Let's let's put an, an exchange in there where you can now start doing exchanging without having the exchange in control of your keys, which is how all the exchanges work these days. Is they have your keys, you're at their whim to their decisions, their onboarding. You have to get upgraded to, to provide your ID, your license, and all that stuff. So, between Jax and Shapeshift, it's an amazing partnership because with Jax, you control your keys. You're on nine different platforms. We offer support for 15 different coins and tons more coming. And then with Shapeshift, right inside of Jax, you basically say, I want to buy some Litecoin, I'll send this amount of Ether, and then Litecoin shows up in your Jax Litecoin wallet. It's an amazing frictionless system that now provides exchange with you being in control of your keys. And we think there's going to be a massive shift from people off of the exchanges where they're in control of your keys. You know, this is, there's this couple, like Poloniex is, is, offers the largest exchange service here that's doing, I don't know, billions of top trends, billions of volume a day. And we think people are going to shift from those those centralized services where they're holding on to people's keys into a service. Yeah, yeah. There's really going to be no reason yeah. for you to be in, on a site where other people are holding on to your keys. Yeah, it's a really beautiful. It's very very dangerous. Yeah, but what you guys are building creates a lot again more freedom. You know, we keep coming back to this freedom aspect. But now, not only do, do you guys or does the wallet or the interface, whatever you want to call it, Jax, not control my keys. But I can send money and exchange it with Eric Shapeshift, and they don't control my keys either. It's we're really getting privacy and security from the marketplace, like we all know is possible, rather than looking for the regulations from the government, which hardly ever work and typically just get in our way as entrepreneurs while we build. I'm really glad that you guys have been able to build something. And Eric too. I'll give Eric another shout out. Um, build something that offers a really awesome service, but without all the counterparty risk that we've had to previously have, it's, it's really amazing. Um, Anthony, I want to chat with you very quickly about the, the Decentral project. You previously mentioned it where uh, at the beginning of the show, how you had been pulling together a team using your network of Decentral project. What is the Decentral project and is it still currently in development or being used? Yeah, it's currently in development. And uh, it's basically the it's the overall project where Jax is a part of it. Jax is the, the well, kind of the first part. But I'd even say like my movement and involvement with Ethereum and then stuff I did before that building communities was kind of the genesis of the entire project. Decentral is my brand. It's uh, it's something that I've uh, 
done since 2014. It came about while setting up a physical location called Bitcoin Decentral. Instead of Bitcoin Central, it became Bitcoin Decentral. And then it turned into Decentral once we started you know, realizing it wasn't just about Bitcoin, it's about other ones. That's really led to the genesis of, of JAX. And then the whole project's goal is to, is to allow people to be in control of their, of, their, of their whole digital lives. And we do this by corralling the entire ecosystem and providing support where we create win, 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 wins for everybody. So Jack supports many different partners. We support Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, uh, Bitcoin, uh, all, uh, Dogecoin. And we're providing support and we're providing, uh, you know, we're, the, we're the, the product that helps other projects. Then with our partners, we're bringing in the companies, the BitPays, the, the Coinbases, into JAX. And that's supporting all of the ecosystem. So the Decentral project is really the project to assist every other project in the space and help decentralized technologies grow and flourish, provide more liberty, get that paradigm shift going where we're saying we can be in control of our digital lives. We don't need to rely on banks to hold this stuff. And it gets all of, the, all of that friction that you were mentioning before that you were doing, with the, we had with the banks. So it's really about, about allowing people to take control of their lives, provide more freedom, more liberty, help life. And that's, that's kind of the overall encompassing Decentral project. And it's being put together with our network of con connections that Charlie and I have developed over the years. And it's really cool seeing everybody coming on board and say, yeah, of course I'll support that. I'm, I, you'll be, you can be our partner for sure. So it's going to be a major, major network and a project to help every other project in the space. Yeah, so I know you guys are good friends and you're working together at Jax now, which I think is amazing. Uh, when did you guys meet and, and like start understanding who each other was in the crypto space and start building that network and respect as mutual entrepreneurs, Charlie? What do you mean by that? Uh, I'm just wondering like when you two became connected and became <laughs> friends and if there, oh. if there was like a good, if there's a funny story, just a little. <laughs> there a, a, a there little. is the funny story. It's funny stories that seemed really a, like a, like a, like a. A straightforward question. Um, go, go ahead, Charlie. Yours. So there's, there's. So we actually met in New York, but um, no, no, we I didn't. Was, we met in New Hampshire, the Liberty Forum. Okay, we met at the Liberty Forum, and I don't yeah. remember meeting Anthony, but um, we were. I yeah, was there is, with this, with Jeffrey Tucker I'll, I'll, and I'll, Eric. I'll Gordy's. tell a little bit about that. I'll tell you a bit about it. He doesn't remember me. So this <laughs> is an early this, days. This, this, this was early days when I I was a nobody. Yeah. I was. This was 2013. 2013 it was the Liberty Forum, of course. The Free Talk Live is from New Hampshire, and they were put, they they were helping with the Free Talk pro, uh, the Free Talk uh, project uh, to get uh, this to do this thing called the Liberty Forum. And I went down down to New Hampshire, drove down there, and Charlie, Roger, and Eric were on a panel there uh, talking about Bitcoin. And to me, you know, I just spent six months not not sleeping, learning about Bitcoin. And these guys are like the gods, <laughs> right? This right, is, right? These are the three three guys together on stage. I'm like. I want to be like them. Yeah. So I met Charlie, I met Roger, but that was just more about, yeah, we don't know who this guy is. And then we met in, uh, at Inside Bitcoins in New York. And I was hungover. Yeah, he was hungover. <laughs> he sat down beside me. I introduced myself. <laughs> like, uh, he's probably like, I don't, I don't want to talk to him right now. <laughs> he, then went, he then went on stage at a presentation. And then we really connected in Argentina at the Latin yeah. America Bitcoin oh, Conference. 2013. What an amazing conference. Were you it there? Was, I, uh, you were there. Right? Yeah, you don't remember me either then, Charlie, huh? Okay. <laughs> I, I was there too, and I don't remember you either, Ash. Well, so we, we, didn't, we didn't meet, Anthony. We didn't meet, but uh, that's when we really connected. Him starting off the, uh, the the Bitcoin Foundation, me starting the Bitcoin Alliance of Canada. We really connected there and had a great talk. I remember, like, it was on the it was on the rooftop of one of these these restaurants that we were at, and that was the first time that we yeah. really sat down and really talked about our struggles mm. and what we were trying to accomplish on the trying to build more communities. Aspects. Yeah, yeah, and we had a great talk. I remember, and that's when we really, I think, we, we really hit it off and. And then it was from there, we stayed in contact, became great friends. And then just this past November, both of us moved to Sarasota. Well, I moved there for the winters and he moved down there permanently. And we just, one day he said, hey, I'm moving to Florida. I said, me too. And he goes, I'm moving to Sarasota, I go, me too. He said, I'm moving December 1st. I said, me too. <laughs> so it was just meant to be. And we spent a lot of time in the hot tub and, and swimming and stuff together during the winter. Uh, and barbecues. just kind of, just it's barbecues and, and just, just, just kind of, Kept in, you know, obviously feeling what's going on with Jax, and, and then it just kind of meant to be. And, and he joined the team recently, and it's been really great having Charlie and his network, his connections, and it's it's really been cool working with him. You know, but besides Charlie being an unbelievable entrepreneur, you know, one thing I appreciate about you, Charlie, is you are a great connector, and you're always looking to connect people. And there's just a a 
special personality trait with guys like you who are constantly like making connections in their head. Oh, you're looking for this. Well, I think I know somebody that can help you or, Oh, you're looking for this person. I think I know. Somebody. Well, the good thing about it too, is that Anthony can close the deal. So sometimes I'll like spend a lot of time talking and just working things out. And then Anthony will walk in. All right. How do we get, how do we make this happen? Like right now? Mm. And you just need that kind of like, uh, you know what I mean? It's hard it's, to explain. It's another, it's another cool thing being a hundred percent owner of a company and also having funding. I mean, we, we, we've never had to take outside funding. I can make quick decisions here because I own everything with Jackson, with Decentral. Uh, something that I learned very important from, from Ethereum and having eight partners and decisions not getting made. And it, it's, I, I swore that I said, you know, I never have partners again. And, and if I can do it myself, I'm going to do it because, you know, you got companies spending a year getting VC money and doing their rounds and trying to get the money to come in and come in. It's like, we don't need to worry about that. We can focus on execution. We can focus on what our goals are. Uh, we can make fast decisions. We've got a great team. We're growing like weeds. We got we're profitable now. It's it's really a great thing, and 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 we're we got some some crazy heights that we want to achieve. Yeah, well, you know, I really appreciate what both of you guys are doing. I use Jacks pretty much daily at this point. Uh, it's just a wonderful wallet. I I've got it on three devices, and it really really helps me see how to explain a blockchain interface to other people. Jax is the wallet that I recommend everyone install on their devices whenever I'm going to send them maybe their first bit of Dash or Ethereum or maybe even still Bitcoin. I'd love to buy more beers in Bitcoin. I hope they get that scaling taken care of so it can go back like yes. the old days. You know, here's it crossing our fingers that this stuff is going to happen. I think August the 1st is supposed to be a big day, Charlie. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um August 1st will kind of be the user activated soft fork, but I think that Segwit 2X, uh, which is the market brought uh, solution, will be will be activated before then. We've already, we're already seeing over 80% of the miners um, already um, signaling for for Segwit. So scaling is going to happen. The good thing about it, uh, all, all, all different projects have different ways that they, you know, push forward different improvements and developments. And when you have a no leader, Things get messy sometimes, but if as long as you trust that the markets are efficient and the markets will demand and bring the best solution, it doesn't. It's not always going to happen on day one or day two, but it'll come eventually. Yeah, and in closing here, guys, if there's somebody that's new into the crypto space, you know, I'm liberty and entrepreneurship here. A lot of my listeners are still kind of new or uncertain in the crypto space. What resources would you recommend, or what just how could somebody start getting up to speed on this revolutionary technology? I, I think that there's very, very poor resources online. Yes. There's really no one place to do things. And this is one of the things that we're tackling with the Central Project, and there'll be more information about that in a bit. But it's about, I think meetups is, is the greatest place to start, is get out there in the communities, be interactive with other people in the community, and, and don't jump in too quickly. You get all these people that are so, they want to make that quick buck. They want to get into these ICs. They don't want the fear of missing out. It's really take your time Scary. and also find, find somebody, or hopefully you have somebody in your network that you can trust and listen to, don't take advice from them from, but maybe if you if you just, they can direct, point you in the right direction, but there's nothing worse than, than people giving advice, um, giving advice on what to do with your own money or what you should be doing and, hey, get into this and do that. I tell people all the time, including my dad, dad, here's what I'm doing. Uh, maybe you want to look over here and do some research on this, but I'm not going to tell you what you should be getting involved in and doing because, A, I don't want to take that responsibility for, for, for leading you to poor decisions. And B, that's something you need to do on your own is take responsibility for, for your knowledge. And, and, and then you make those decisions without anybody else making them for you. And what about you, Charlie? What's a good way for people to get started? I, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Honestly, the meetups are one of the best ways. Um, there are so many of them. Um, look, look, for, look for your local blockchain meetup. Go meet some people physically in person. And anyone who says you should buy this, don't listen to them. Mm. Um, but that's the best way to learn. And to what, be honest, but there's some good books too. There's there's a there's a new, a new book that just came out called um, "How Money Got Free" by Brian Eha. It's at your local bookstore. He really he really talks about like the the origins of the blockchain industry as a whole and kind of b with, between a cast of characters. And and for me at least, when I read a novel or I read like like a book or like a story, it makes it easier to understand something. And are there any conferences that you guys would recommend people go to? Uh, consensus to me is always a great one. And then the Latin America Bitcoin conference is always a lot of fun. Yeah, Latin America Bitcoin conference is a great one. Yeah, I agree. Those yeah. guys do a great job. I think it's back in uh, Buenos Aires this year. That or no, Colombia? No, I don't, I don't <clears throat> think so. I think it's in Colombia this year. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 guys, is there anything else you'd like to hit on before we get going? 
I don't You're think great. so. I got I got a jet anyway, but thanks so much, Ash. Really yeah. appreciate it. Good thank you so much. Here. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. Charlie, you guys are awesome. Keep building freedom, all right? Have fun in Croatia. Hey, you thanks. too, man. And if anybody's in Budapest or Portugal in the next two months, hit me up and let me know. I'll be there. Sounds good. All right. See you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, I think that just about covers it. Thanks again for listening to episode 71, the Jax.io crypto wallet and blockchain interface with Charlie Shrim and Anthony DiOrio. One thing is for sure is that cryptocurrencies and blockchains are here to stay and hopefully the personal freedom and responsibilities associated will be well understood and benefit us as this technology continues to improve our lives. Please share this episode on Facebook and Twitter. The crypto space is still very early on. I know for some of us that have been in this for several years, it seems that things are crazy right now and going at such a fast speed, but the average person still has no clue what a blockchain is. So share this episode on Facebook and Twitter or, or however, I'd really appreciate it. That said, until next time, you know what to do. Keep building freedom. <laughs>